So now in this video, we're going to pretty quickly cover the 555 timer integrated circuit, which we have one right here, in by stable mode. So the 555 timer is wired either in a by stable mode, monostable mode, or a stable mode. So we're just going to cover the by stable mode in this video. So what that means is right now we have what happens with the circuit as soon as you turn the power on the LED is off that's because the output is off output is pin number three here we got uh, pin number one pin number two three four then you jump over five six seven eight we'll get to that coming up but to show the uh, by stable part of the circuit LED is off until we hit that switch now the LED is on and it's going to stay on as long as the uh, power is applied and uh, so that's why it's stable in this condition it's on of course I have this other button though that turns it off so now it's off it's going to stay off the outputs gonna stay off until of course I hit that button so the integrated circuit is stable in uh, two conditions, on or off, until an outside force forces it to change. That's why it's called bistable. So now I'm going to take apart the circuit and put it back together. But before I do, I want to talk how about how I am powering this. So I just unplug this. This is a uh, sole bay. 30 watt uh, power supply you can adjust the voltage I tend to keep it at 9 volts as much as I can that way if I'm not paying much attention I generally just assume that uh, this is 9 volts so I try to make sure that's always 9 volts this cost about uh, $14 for this power supply and it comes with uh, different plugs for uh, at the end here plugs into there so I got the barrel plug that fits into the breadboard power supply there so now the uh, breadboard power supply here I got uh, both of these from Amazon this was about 14 this one was about $16 for nine of these so a little less than two bucks each or so so this takes from a uh, 6 to 12 volts according to the seller and it outputs that's what it inputs it outputs 5 or 3.3 volts depending on where this is plugged in so I have both rails here plugged in at 5 volts so we'll be using 5 volts with this circuit so for the circuit itself let's begin by looking at the 555 timer so there you can see the Texas instrument logo and right there at the bottom it says NE 555P so if you want all the details on this component do a Google search of Texas Instrument 555 or NE 555P data sheet and it'll give you all kinds of information about this and other 555 timers by Texas Instrument. And now moving along to the wiring, also I want to mention I did plug this back in so that I don't uh, hit the button later on wondering why it's not turning on. A lot of times when stuff doesn't turn on because you forgot to plug it in. So in any case, it's plugged in, but it's set off. So we have these uh, two jumpers here to begin with. So this is pin 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 5, 6, 7, 8. When you're looking at a schematic, you're going to see pin number 1 connected to the negative rail. Pin number 8 connected to the positive rail. So that powers the integrated circuit, but also... The 555 timer has three resistors from pin number 8 to pin number 1. And so pin number 8 starts at the positive rail, goes through a resistor, to another resistor, through that resistor to another resistor, and then to the negative rail. It's the same thing inside of the chip. And that's how you get your, it's a voltage divider, that's how you get your one-third of the power supply voltage and two-thirds of the power supply voltage that doesn't really apply with this circuit but it's something to be aware of 
these are powering the uh, integrated circuit and they're setting voltages within it of one third and two thirds to be used elsewhere. Now we come to our first switch which I wired up to pin number two here. Pin number two is the trigger and you can see it comes to the bottom of the switch. This switch is separated from top to bottom. It is not separated from left to right. If I plug something in here, it's just like plugging it on this row. So make sure you keep it separated the yeah, right way. These particular ones are top to bottom here. And then that comes to the negative row. So when we press this switch, we will give a negative pulse to the trigger and that will trigger the integrated circuit. And so we want to prevent false triggering. So I have here a 10 kilo ohm, 10,000 ohm resistor. We're going to plug that one end into the uh, positive rail. Try to line these up here. And uh, plug in the other end to that row where the trigger is. So what this is going to do, it's going to keep a positive voltage of 5 volts here. Very little potential current though. But it keeps a positive voltage of about 5 volts at the pin. And that keeps it from doing anything. When we press this now that will easily override because it goes directly to ground zero volts gives zero volts to the trigger and that is what actually triggers it. So what this is doing is preventing false triggering. It's making sure we have a positive voltage to the pin until we press the switch. Otherwise stray voltages and stuff might accidentally trigger it. So now we come to pin number three the output I have this jumper here because I have these breadboards that are nicely uh, put together so we can do a big project on uh, here so just moving this here to get out of the way I'll add the resistor and LED later on but there are load this outputs up to according to the data sheet 200 milliamps of current we're only going to need about about 20 milliamps of current and so we got plenty of current to work with if you need more than 200 milliamps of current you'll have to uh, add some transistors and stuff but uh, in any case let's move along and now we have pin number four wired up it's just like pin number two with that switch only we have it wired to this switch when you press the switch then it connects pin number four directly to ground pin number four is the reset pin that resets the integrated circuit just like right when you turn the uh, power supply on and haven't pressed that switch. We have a pull up resistor on it also. So this resistor, again it's a 10 kilo ohm resistor, keeps the pin positive until we hit the switch which will force it to uh, zero volts. Just like uh, the one up here. So we're gonna move along. And that brings us to pin number six which is the threshold. So we're going to plug the uh, threshold into the negative rail, but before we do, I'm going to show you why that is important. So I'm going to turn the power on now, which is okay. I added the uh, LED with its protective resistor over here. Of course, the LED, the long lead, the anode, needs to be towards the more positive side of the circuit when it is going to be on, and the short lead, the cathode, towards the uh, negative side of the circuit. So the power is on. I'm going to plug in this jumper here to uh, pin number six, the threshold, and we're going to put it to the negative rail. I'm going to show you why. So up here we have two thirds of the power supply voltage. I'm going to plug that in right there. And now when I try to turn the LED on, you can see that it turns off right away. That's because the voltage is too high to the threshold. So let's go down to where it is one third of the power supply voltage. And now you can see that the LED stays on until we hit that switch. So that's what we need at the threshold there, the uh, negative voltage. So I'm going to take this jumper there, try not to block so much light, and just uh, plug it right in directly to the uh, negative rail there. And we'll get the same effect. And to finish off the circuit we have this capacitor here to uh, pin number five. So this is actually 
as you saw the circuit was working without the capacitor just fine so it's an optional capacitor and it makes the integrated circuit more reliable though when uh, a voltage spike might uh, throw things off that kind of balances out and uh, so this is a 0 0.01 microfarad same as a 10 nanofarad capacitor usually you'll see though 0 0.01 microfarad on the data sheets and stuff so that comes to pin number five pin number seven up here that's the discharge pin so if this were a timing circuit there'd be a capacitor that's uh, plugged to the threshold pin and then to ground as that charges up when it needs to discharge it would discharge through a resistor and the discharge pin we don't have one of those timing capacitors in the circuit so we don't have to worry about that this circuit works uh, just fine as it is so we'll leave pin number seven floating